Hi guys, so uh, let's try to find the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium of this game. Player 1 moves Z, W, player 2 moves C, D, and then player 2 and player 1 here moves simultaneously. So when you try to solve uh, the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium of this game, well, what you have to do, well, here, remember, there are two proper subgames. So this is the first proper subgame. And this is the second proper subgame. So what does that mean? That means you can basically take these subgames as an individual games and analyze them, uh, find their Nash equilibria or optimal strategies and plug them back. So how do we do that? So this game can actually, well, this is a simultaneous move game, right? Meaning player one cannot observe player two's move, whether it's A or B. So that means I cannot use backward induction. So the optimal actions or optimal strategies can be found only by writing the normal form and finding the Nash equilibrium. So here I have to find the Nash. So this game is equivalent to this. All right, I put the payoffs. I found the uh, Nash equilibrium strategies. There are two pure Nash equilibrium strategies. The first one is XB corresponding to payoff 4, 6. The other one is YA corresponding to the payoff 8, 5. All right, so this part of the game is done. Well, what about this part? Well, this is not a simultaneous move game. Player 2 moves alone. Uh, so therefore, you have to find the optimal strategies by using backward induction. What is the optimal strategy for player 2? Is it C or D? Well, D is going to bring him two payoffs, so therefore C is optimal. All right, so here C, here, well, don't forget there are two, X, B, and Y, A. So for that reason, I am not putting any uh, 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 sort of branch here. But what does that mean? That means if player one moves Z, he knows that his outcome is going to be 6-4. When he moves to W, however, uh, well, there are two potential options. Uh, not options, outcome. Well, one outcome could be here, they may end up playing XB, which corresponds to payoff 4, 6, or they can end up playing YA, which corresponds to payoff uh, 8, 5. So there are two optimal outcome here. So what does that mean? Therefore, we have to sort of re uh, make this, transform this game into the following decision. But there are two cases. All right, so I'm going to call them case one and case two because each K is optimal. For that reason, I have two cases. So case one is the following. Player one, he moves Z and he knows he's going to get 6-4 uh, because the opponent is going to play C. And if he moves W, uh, here the optimal outcome is, let's suppose, XB and so corresponding payoff is 4-6. All right. Well, then here, instead of XB, let's suppose they're going to play YA here. So therefore, the optimal decision is going to be, I'm sorry, the four player one's op uh, choices Z versus W again. The payoff on Z is still 6-4, but the payoff in W is going to be 8 and 5. All right. So once again, if you like, you can put the names because player two is going to play C and here because the players are going to play XB. And here again, player two is going to play C, and 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 you uh, the the strategies are going to be Y A. Well, the thing is, some students, uh, for some reason, uh, transform this game something like this: player one is going to choose Z or W, and then player two is going to play C here, and then uh, here player one is going to play uh, X. Uh, what is it? Uh, B, and then player. Um, I'm sorry, so let me, so player one plays X uh, versus Y, and then player two plays uh, B, and then player two plays A, all right? So then they try to, I mean, they transform the game this way, and then write down the normal form uh, of this game, and then find the Nash equilibrium of this game. Well, I mean, this is all wrong. You can't do that. Once you solve the Nash equilibrium of this subgame, there is no more imperfect information in this game. So whenever there is no imperfect information, uh, you shouldn't write a normal form representation. You should apply backward induction. All right? You use this 
uh, normal form representation and solve the Nash equilibrium only if there is an imperfect information, meaning there is an information set. And so one player cannot observe the other player. All right. So that's very, very important. So let's finish the analysis. So here in this case one, obviously player one is going to go for Z because six is higher than four. And here obviously he's going to go for W because eight is higher than six. So therefore that means there are two subgame perfect Nash equilibrium strategy profile. And this is what I'm going to bring uh, sort of create now. So what are those? Well, player one is going to play Z first and then he's going to play uh, uh, X, right, in this subgame. So that's, that's the entire strategy in this game for player one. And then for player two, uh, she's gonna play C here and then B here. So then ZX comma CB is one subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. Here, that brings me another SP &E. Player one plays W here. All right, and then player one plays uh, uh, Y here, comma, player two plays C here and A here. So that's the other SPE, &E, and there is no other uh, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium strategy profiles in pure strategies. All right, so that's it, there are only two of them, and this is how we analyze this game.